Hello Jazz Cats. Today we will be discussing uh, Django Reinhardt, one of the great jazz guitarists. Django Reinhardt is also one of the most unique and creative voices in jazz. He is also one of the few jazz musicians who uh, was from outside of America to have a major international impact. He was a style innovator who developed a style of jazz known as Gypsy Jazz. The style was unique because it only included string instruments. Uh, therefore, there was the absence of brass, reeds, and drums. Um, the absence of these instruments gave the style an element that seemed more connected to, uh, let's say, traditional European folk music uh, that you might hear from a European string band. So Django, Django Reinhardt was born in Belgium, 1910. His father was a musician, his mother was a dancer. The family basically lived on the road in a caravan, a traveling caravan. And around the age of 12, Django started to teach himself violin, banjo, and guitar. He was basically self-taught. At the age of 15, he began earning money by playing. And by 17, he was already married. Um, 18, he makes his first recording uh, on a, I think it was on a banjo, a uh, guitar banjo, a six string banjo. So in 1928, at the age of 18, that same year, he becomes badly burned and partially deformed. Uh, this occurs when Django knocks over a candle in his gypsy caravan. Uh, it creates a fire, it burns half of his body, fuses his fourth and fifth fingers together on his left hand. And the accident was so bad that he was hospitalized for 18 months, during which time there was discussion of amputating Django's legs. Uh, Django refused the amputation and relearned how to play the guitar with his fused fingers. In doing so, he created a unique way of cording the guitar, um, which is partially how he got his signature sound and style. By 1929, uh, he became deeply inspired by American jazz, which he was hearing on records and he began playing gigs in France. While in France, he hooks up with a virtuosic and schooled violinist named Stéphane Grappelli. And although the two men had completely opposite personalities and training, they formed this incredible partnership and developed this gypsy jazz sort of sound. From 1934 till around 1939, the, man, uh, the men, uh, Grappelli and, and Reinhardt, uh, we're, we're performing at a place called the Hot Club uh, in Paris, in Paris, France. And they had a quintet. The quintet, the quintet at the Hot Club included an instrumentation of three acoustic guitars. Uh, one of the guitars was Django's brother. Uh, a violin player, which was Stefan Grappelli, and the string bass. Okay, so all acoustic stringed instruments. During World War II, Django was living in fear for his life. Uh, the Germany, Germans uh, under Hitler's regime, uh, the Nazi regime, were uh, executing Jews, but also gypsies. Um, so, um, in addition, jazz was outlawed throughout most of Europe. So, luckily, Django had a group of loyal fans and supporters who helped to secure his safety. He basically lived with them. 1946, uh, he embarks on his first U.S. tour and he's working as a guest soloist with the great Duke Ellington uh, at Carnegie Hall. By 1947, uh, Django Reinhardt returned to France and to a gypsy jazz lifestyle, a gypsy lifestyle, really. He became increasingly more unreliable. Uh, he grew uh, sporadic in his behaviors. He was erratic. Uh, this was certainly enhanced by his heavy use of, of drinking um, at times, he would just simply skip sold-out concerts. Um, but by 1951, he makes a bit of a comeback. He's back playing at the Hot Club, I believe, in Paris, or, or various Paris jazz clubs. And he begins to add some bebop repertoire into his playing. In uh, 1953, though, at the age of 43, if only 43, uh, Django dies of a brain hemorrhage. Um, but Django Reinhardt really will long be remembered for his virtuosic style. Uh, he was an innovator. He could play incredibly fast uh, and clean runs on the acoustical on the acoustic jazz guitar. And he can also provide these incredibly uh, beautiful corded harmonies based on the way he played the guitar. He also wrote some brilliant tunes, one of which is called Nuances. 
uh, and in other words, a minor swing. And his relationship, uh, in fact, with Grappelli was as important to gypsy jazz as, say, Charlie Parker's relationship uh, with Dizzy Gillespie was to the contributions of uh, the formation of bebop music. Uh, but unfortunately, Reinhardt's personal shortcomings uh, made it difficult for Grappelli to continue to work with Django uh, past a certain point in his career, which is true, actually, of, of Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. But when you consider that Django Reinhardt had basically no education, couldn't read or write, in fact, he signed his contracts with an X, uh, he learned jazz basically from recordings, and he had a physical deformity that most people wouldn't dare to try to overcome. Um, you can only marvel at just how amazing Django Reinhardt was as a jazz innovator. So I encourage you at this point to take a listen to some of Django Reinhardt's music. Have a good day.